Hello and welcome back to our course on the Christian Scriptures. Today we'll have our first session in the unit on the other canonical witnesses. And we will begin with a letter to the Hebrews. For the first lesson, I am taking you to the Great Passaic River Falls in Patterson, New Jersey. They are the second largest waterfalls in North America. Impressive, right? Look at that. But then again, the Great Falls and Niagara Falls are even greater, the greatest falls in North America. So I had the chance to take you here as well. Well, in our lesson you will find out that the book of Hebrews plays a lot with a comparison greater than. But before we start, let's just say that now we know Jesus liked to drink coffee. Did you know that too? No? Well, we know that because he brews, right? Jesus is greater than Starbucks. Sorry, I had to make that funny joke. But jokes aside, Hebrews is probably the most int intricate, extraordinary and interesting book within the section of other canonical witnesses. With 13 chapters, it is the third longest uh, letter in the New Testament after Romans with 16 chapters and 1 Corinthians with 16. It might also be a difficult book to understand if you are not deeply knowledgeable about the Old Testament and its stories and symbols. This may be part of the reason for why it is not a very popular book. You also kind of have to uh, read Hebrews as a whole to get the full message. While there may be a few passages that are meaningful without their context, such as Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. But most of the book needs its context to make sense. Therefore, this book is read and quoted much less frequently in worship services. Who wrote Hebrews? We don't really know. There is no mention of any, anyone claiming authorship in Hebrews itself. But there can be some speculation. It's important to remember that any of the attempts trying to identify an author are simply speculation. But it is still an interesting exercise. From about 400 CE to the uh, Reformation in 1517, Hebrews was introduced as the Epistle of Paul to the Hebrews. This was uh, thought because of the mention of Timothy in Hebrews 13.23, uh, who was an important part of Paul's mission, and because the author himself seems to be Im imprisoned, hoping to be released soon in Hebrews 13.19. However, the author also identifies himself as not being an eyewitness to Jesus, but the stories were attested to by the author in Hebrews 2.3. That would speak against Paul's authorship as he would speak of direct knowledge from Jesus through, the, through his encounter on the road to Damascus. The style of writing and the use of language in this book are also quite different from the style we know through the Pauline tradition. Tertullian in 155 through 240 CE, an early Christian author from Carthage in North Africa, identifies the author as, of Hebrews as Barnabas in his work called the uh, Pocticitia. In, in Acts 4, 36, Barnabas is identified as the priest from the tribe of Levi, and later in Acts 13, 1 through 4, he is together with Paul, commissioned by the congregation in Antioch to go on the first missionary journey. Martin Luther, 1483 to 1546 CE, the initiator of the Protestant Reformation, uh, thought that Apollos of Alexandria might be the author of Hebrews. Apollos is identified in Acts 18.24 as an eloquent man who is well versed in the scriptures. That would fit the style and content of Hebrews. Apollos is also mentioned several times in 1 Corinthians 1.12, 3.4-6 and, and 3.22. 
This is another plausible authorship, but again, all of this speculation, none of these ideas can be held for certain. When was Hebrews written? There's a high likelihood that Hebrews was written before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 CE. If the destruction had already taken place at the time of writing, the author would have mentioned it since the priestly duties and sacrifices are playing a central role in Hebrews. The author of Hebrews uses the present tense uh, wherever there are references to sacrifices in the temple in Hebrews 5, 1 through 3 and 7, 27 and many other places. You can see them here in the text, underneath in the text. Hebrews is also mentioned several times in 1st Clement, the first of two letters written to the Corinthians. They are not in the New Testament, but they have my name, right? Um, written by Pope Clement I, who was in office from 88 to 99 CE. That means that Clement already knew he of Hebrews as a document of the early church. Who was the audience? Again, also the question cannot be answered with certainty. It must have play, been people that were deeply familiar with the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. Hebrews makes so many references to passages in the Old Testament that only people with deep knowledge of it would fully understand. This is part of the problem for today's audience who do not have such deep understanding of the Hebrew scriptures. The original audience might have been Jewish and maybe Jewish converts to Christianity who are now tempted by Judaizers to leave this faith again, like we see in Galatians 2.14. Others suggest that the audience were Jewish Christians who played with the idea of merging with the Essenes at Qumran. The Essenes were one of the Jewish movements in the first century CE who lived in community choosing to live ascetic lives in poverty and who practiced daily immersions, a forerunner to today's baptism. Again, others think that maybe Hebrews was addressed to a group of temple priests who converted to Christianity. See Acts 6 verse 7. Again, none of these theories can be fully substantiated. What is the style of writing? Even though it is listed as an epistle or letter, it lacks the normal signs of that genre. Only the ending seems like the exhortation of a letter in Hebrews 13. The rest feels more like a very well crafted sermon that uses eight passages from the Hebrew scripture and preaches on them. Hebrew 2, 5 through 9 is a sermon on Psalm 8, 4 through 6. Hebrew 3, 7 through 4, 13 is a sermon on Psalm 95, 7 through 11. Hebrews 4:14 4, through 7:28 is a sermon on Psalm 110:4. Hebrews 8:1 through 10:18 is a sermon on Jeremiah 31:31 31, 31 through 34. Hebrews 10:1 through uh, through 10 is a sermon on Psalm 46 through 8. And Hebrews 10:32 through 12:3 is a sermon on Habakkuk 2:3 to 4. Then Hebrews 12:4 through 13 is a sermon on Proverbs 3:11 through 12. Hebrews 12, 18 to 24, a sermon on Exodus 19, 10 to 23. And what is the Hebrews charisma, the message? Jesus is supreme and sufficient. And the Torah is fulfilled in the new covenant through Jesus as the mediator. These themes pass through the entire book. The Greek word for greater than or superior is used 15 times throughout the book. That's why I started by the video with the comparison of the Patterson Falls with Niagara Falls. The four main themes are Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus is greater than the priests. And Jesus is greater the greatest sacrifice. And now you can watch the Bible Project video on Hebrews. 
see you next time. Who knows where I will be the next time. Bye bye.